there's not too many of us left. And if we don't tell the story, people will forget what happened. So we have to tell it to keep it in mind that people remember what happened. Six million Jews were murdered during the Holocaust. Many of those who survived fled Europe to rebuild their lives. As the years pass, fewer survivors remain. And those who are left were children when Adolf Hitler and the Nazis rose to power in 1933. They witnessed and endured things no child should ever have to experience. The painful memories are still vivid and those who can bear it tell the stories of their childhood. Life was quite normal until uh, the Nazis came to power in 35. The signs went up immediately uh, and they read, Juden unerwünscht, Jews not wanted. And wherever in town you went, there was this sign. You know, when, when now I speak about this thing, it is very painful. There was no mistaking the fear that my parents and my grandmother were showing. And, um, and that's when the family discussions led to, we have to leave. I still clearly remember my last day home from school when kids that I would played with the previous day started throwing stones at me. Stones that hit me and, uh, and hurt. And uh, they were obviously put up to this by their parents. These were kids I had played with previously, but that was sort of my message not to go to school anymore. Jews were not allowed to walk on the sidewalk. They had to walk on the streets. And so various things changed that were not like that before. Jews, first of all, had to identify themselves by wearing a star on their chest. Okay? Big star. This is what the yellow star looked like that we had to wear on our chest. This one or this one here. But we knew that if we were caught not wearing the star, they usually shot you right away. Well, if we had known then that it was being shot or going to camps and gas chambers, maybe people would have chosen to be shot. In November 1938, there was a big uh, uh, upheaval which was called Kristallnacht, for those who know a little bit about history. That's when they burned on, down all the synagogues and they vandalized all the Jewish businesses, including my father's barber shop. And arrested every Jewish man that they could get a hold of all over the country, just in, in one night. And I rushed into my room, brought out a little suitcase, rushed back out again and said, Fati, Fati, Daddy, Daddy, if they take you, I'm going with you. And by this time, my mother got to the door. She, was, she and the door were slammed against the wall. Uh, the Nazis, about a half a dozen of them, rushed up the stairs with guns. The Germans took 270-plus men that they picked up in the street in the Jewish quarter in Amsterdam. and. None, not one of those persons was ever seen again. We were in a house which was called the International Ghetto. And every night around midnight came a few young Hungarian Nazi. They are called Erosmiths. I don't know exactly the right English name for them, but they were more cruel than the Nazi. They came in the night and tell you and you and you come, and then they took to the Danube and shoot them. That's when they came down and took all the young people on transports to work in Germany, and you know, and they start the, the Jewish raffles, meaning they, they would close up streets and take everybody away. That, that's in French, that's what the word raffle means, it has nothing to do with getting a prize, it means being taken away. They would just close up the street with their trucks and get in there with their dogs into all the houses and pull all the people they thought were Jews out and uh, put them on the trucks 
and they were gone. They lined us all up in front of our homes with the whole family, father, mother, whoever was in the house and everybody else that was a Jew on that same street. And they asked us to take with us whatever we could carry. And we saw cattle cars, box cars for animals. So we asked my father, they gonna transport us like animals in box cars? The children, we were loaded in a railroad car and we were taken to Auschwitz. It's always night, you see. You have no idea because it was pitch dark inside these cars. In concentration camps, when the Jews arrived, um, they were tattooed with numbers and they ceased to become people. They then became those numbers. And we saw skeletons behind the barbed wires. Skeletons, they were running towards the barbed wire fence and they were begging us for some food. Well, we would give them everything, but we had nothing with us. We left all the food in the boxcars. But they looked awful. They looked like dead people are walking. Awful. I remember stories of a, a mother who had a baby on the train as they were being brought to their concentration camp. And they tried to hide the baby. Um, but when they got to the concentration camps, um, they found the baby and they tied the mother up and they killed the baby in a very horrible way in front of the mother to punish her for having had the baby. The killing started the very first day. Um, every day they shot between 50, 75 and 100 men. It was a terrible place because from the whole town they brought there the dying people who get bomb share, who were shot, and it was full of blood and corpses. They were assembled in this ghetto and uh, killed all of them. There were about 30,000 Riga Latvian Jews who were killed before we got there. And when we came into the ghetto, the snow was full of blood. Well, we were about only 50 feet from the gate, a German officer put his cane around my neck, pulled me out of it. By the time they pulled 11 people out of line, the 3,000 were marched to the gas chambers and they were gas and they later burned. Only 11 of us survived. Where those people are going? They said they are going to the children's camp. Sure. They went to the crematoriums, but we didn't know it. We didn't know it. Thanks God we didn't know it because if we would have known, they would, would have to slaughter us right there. Who would let his mother or his father or his brother or his sister or his grandma or grandpa to go to guest chambers? This was the last time I saw my mother, just 39 years old. And my, and my little And my little brother, Gabby, not even three years old. It is a miracle these children survived to tell their stories. The survivors still wonder why they lived while others died. Although they find comfort in their Jewish faith, most continue to search for the answer. A lot of people ask me, I was only 15 years old, how I managed to survive myself. And that's a good question. I just didn't have the desire to die. What kept me going is hoping that someday this will end. Feel very fortunate in a way that you survived as we did. We lost many of our relatives in the Holocaust, so that was a very painful thing. But I think we tried to uh, have a normal life, not a life in the shadow of our past. It was very important to my husband and I that we keep the memory of all who died alive. 
by passing it on to the other generations, to our children and to our grandchildren. And I like everybody to know that there is life. If you want to make it, you make it. I have such a strong feeling of necessity. You know, why did I survive? Because I needed to bear testimony. I need to be a witness, and that's why I do it, and I will for as long as God gives me the strength.